Hi guys, in this video, we are going over chapter two, practice problems in Connect. And practice problems number one are pretty much just based on the lecture video and the examples I did in that video. It's conceptual questions. And I wanted to go over this practice uh, problem number two assignment with you. There's only four questions and one is a tax return but it's very much review for a tax return assignment this week. So I'm gonna go through it with you step by step. Um, and these first three problems, which are just getting a lot of practice with calculating income tax. And so I did go over this in the video for this week's lecture as well, but I'm gonna use this whiteboard and show you how to use this tax formula to really stay organized when you're calculating these um, tax liability amounts and the different things that they're asking you about. So we're going to run through it together so that you can follow this video and get really good and comfortable with this calculation because once you have that, you're going to have such a good base for this entire class. All right, so this first problem, determine the amount of tax liability in each of the following situations. Use the appropriate tax tables and tax rate schedules. So tax tables are these, which we know we use if we have taxable income of less than 100,000. And tax um, schedules are these. And so we use these if taxable income is over 100,000. Now, obviously we can use it in, in both situations, but we're required to use the tax tables by, based on the rules. So let's start with our first example. So I'm just gonna bring it right over here, right next to the formula, because I think it really helps keep things simple. So a married couple filing jointly with taxable income of 32,991. Now we wanna get to tax liability, which is right here, and where are we? Taxable income. This way you don't have to think about it. You're looking at the formula. You, you can't mess up this way. It makes it a lot easier. So we'll type it right next to that line. So now we need to apply the appropriate income rates. So are we going to use tax schedules or tax tables? We're under 100,000 of taxable income. So we need to use the tax tables, not schedules. So 32,991, let's head over to our schedules. And are we, what type of taxpayer are we? Married filing, oh, this is kind of in the way, married couple filing joint. So we're 32,991. 32,991, so remember, at least this amount, but not over this amount. And if it is this amount, you go to the next one, 32,991, so that's this last line here. We're above this, but under this. And married filing joint is the second column. This is single, this is married filing joint. You can always scroll up to the top of this page to see that if you're confused, at least this, but less than this. Married filing joint column and three, five, seven, six. So that's our tax. Three, five, seven, six. Now, what were we calculating? Tax liability. So that would be three, five, seven, six, right? Yep. See it right here? Three, five, seven, six. Now, We'll do one more because I want to show you the tax rate schedules. That's the only thing I didn't actually cover in the other video. And these continue into the next problem, so it's not as much as it looks like. So a married couple filing joint taxable income. So same setup as this. So we're just going to come right alongside 192 to 57 taxable income. So now tax tables, tax schedules. Schedules, right? We're over a hundred thousand. So let's go figure out how we calculate this on there. 192 to 57. So if income taxable in, well, first we need to look schedule, single, schedule, married filing joint. So we need this one. 
if taxable income is over this column, but not over this column, so where do we fall? We're 190 something, 192, 257. So we're over this, 165, but less than this. So we need to follow this equation. And what is our marginal rate? Our marginal rate is the highest bracket rate, so it would be 24%. Now, to calculate the tax with this method, we take 28,179 plus 24% of the excess over 165,000, the beginning of the bracket. So let's do it. So we need to take 192, 257 and subtract 16500 which equals 192257 minus 165123 equals 27000 to 57. So we need to apply the tax rate of 24% on this amount times 24% equals, so times 0.24% times equals 6. Five, four, one, point six, eight, and so now we're going to add in this number, the twenty-eight thousand, because they already calculated the taxes on those brackets. So now we'll add twenty-eight one seven nine equals thirty-four seven twenty. Point six eight. Now that's our total tax in this scenario. 34, 720, 68. So if we're going to round to the nearest dollar, what will it be? To get rid of the 8, we go to 7. To get rid of the 7, we go to 1. 34, 721. 34, 721, right here. You can see the answer. And we'll be sure to put 34. Seven to one. Okay. Now <clears throat> you can continue doing these, and these problems are going to continue off of each other. So here you'll notice it's the same numbers, but now they're asking us so what's the average tax rate and what's the marginal rate? So if you remember this first one, I said, what's, what is the marginal rate for this one? 32,991. So we can look at this. We're married, filing, joint. Always take that into account first. Single, married, filing, joint. Got to look at the right table. Taxable income is 32991 So we're over 19050 but below 77400 So that means we're in the 12% marginal rate because it's the highest bracket that we're in. That's our marginal. Now, for average, that's a different story. We want to take our total taxes, this 3, 5, 7, 6, and divide it by, I like to divide it by gross income, but in this case, we only have taxable income, so we'll do taxable income, and that gives us 3, 5, 7, 6, divided by 32,991 equals 10.839, blah, blah, blah. It says round to one decimal point, so that'll be 10.8%. And you should don't believe me. 10.8% marginal rate, 12%. So remember over here with our second example, it's the same thing. We're just continuing along. What's the marginal rate? What's the average rate? Remember, marginal rate was that top bracket we were in, 24%. And then average rate, we've just got to add, we just got to divide our total tax, 34, 7 to 1. 
divided by 192,257. And that equals 3, 4, 7, 2, 1, divided by 192, 2, 5, 7, equals 18.1. And so that's a lot less than our marginal rate of 80 of 24. 18.1%. So let's check it out. 18.1 and 24%. So you can see these just continue and you get to calculate that average rate and the marginal rate. Now here, they're a little different. We're going to mix it up for this last problem. It's only these three. Uh, but practicing this is going to be really helpful. So this time we get to do a little bit more of a calculation, but just take these instructions into account. We're coming up with tax liability, but in each case, assume the taxpayer can only take the standard deduction, so we don't need to uh, think about other things. Now I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff, so I have some room. So eight, now we're starting at AGI, a single taxpayer, not head of household, starting with AGI. So let's start here with AGI, 23493. And now we've got to subtract the standard deduction. But they said not head of household, so that means we're single, right? 12,000, so that equals 11,493 for taxable income. So now we need to look up 11,493. 11,493. Now single is the first column, and we need 11,493. So that's right here at the bottom of this one, 11,450 and 11,5. So 1187. 1187. That is our taxable income. Let's see if we're right. 1187. And then with the higher one, you're going to go use the tax rate schedules like we just went over. Now, the last question here is a tax return. And you have your tax return assignment for this week is available over here. And there's two questions in here. There's one super basic um, and a second one that's pretty basic. It just adds one number from Schedule 1 that you get to uh, add in. But otherwise, these are all the same. You only have to do one of these tax return problems, and the other one is 25 bonus points. And the first one you do will be 25 points for, um, fit for the 50 total points. So... Pretty cool, huh? Um, in the meantime, our fourth question here in the practice problems is a return. I'm going to go through this step by step with you so you can see it all. So Jose and Dora Hernandez are married, filing joint. They're 50 and 45 years old, respectively. So that means Jose is 50, Dora is 45, the same order, respectively. Their address is here. Additional information is as follows. So this is their social security number and date of birth, which we need. And then they each have a W-2. So when you look at W-2s, everything gone right, you ignore social security wages because that's a flat tax and Medicare wages because that's a flat tax. Now there are some situations where things get off, but those are very uncommon and I don't even think we cover those in this course. So in general, all you're going to need to do here is add together box ones if someone has more than one W-2 or if, um, you know, a spouse like this situation, and we'll enter the federal withheld taxes and we'll add them together for that purpose. We also have uh, interest income from our bank, $300, 
And we have a dependent named Adela, five years old, birth date, social security number, tells us what their occupations are, and prepare the tax return. They are entitled to a $2,000 child tax credit for now just entered on the appropriate line. We don't get to tax credits. We won't even be pulling those in here for a while. So, And then they tell us that the couple did want to contribute to the presidential campaign and that they had qualifying health coverage at all times during the year. So you got to find a way to stay organized as you go through these problems. If you have the paper book, you can certainly check things off in the paper book as you enter them. Um, the book is pretty good about listing these problems in order. So for example, you get to enter the information and it tells us to, to enter Joe first or Jose first and then Dora. And that's true. You always want to enter people in the order that they've been entered in the past on their form 1040. So that's really important. So you can see here filing status, Jose Hernandez, his social security number. Dora, her social security number, their address, presidential election campaign, they both wanted to give to that. They have a full year healthcare coverage. And then they add their dependent here. She qualifies for the child tax credit. That's all they gave us, so that's all we can worry about. And that's it for page one. So now we see we have page two here. Sometimes I like to start on page, if there's more stuff than just the 1040, I always start over on the right, but in this case, it was just the 1040. So, so now we're to the numbers, wages, salaries, tips, and form W-2. So this is form W-2, wages, box one. We add them together, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 800, or 60, 76, I can't add one doing a video, 30, 40, 50, 60, 76, 800. Yep, so that goes right in box one. Then, oh, tax exempt interest, taxable interest. Well, a bank's interest reported on Form 1099-INT is taxable. Interest has to tell you if it's not taxable, otherwise it is. So now we keep coming down here, we see seven. Remember, line six, additional income and adjustments to income, that's on schedule one. Things like alimony, hint, hint, for the tax return problem, are income. So alimony is income to the person who's receiving it, and it's a deduction on that Schedule 1 for the person who's paying it. And you can, you'll can you see that Schedule 1 right here to enter that. Now, line 7 is adjusted gross income, and it's going to combine lines 1 through 6. And in our case, we just have these two numbers, so 77,100. Enter the standard deduction or itemize. So in their case, 24,000. Taxable income, they get to subtract that, brings them down to 53,100. And then we calculate their tax, 5,994. Now here we can see on line 12, if your only non-refundable credit is the child tax credit, and or credit for other dependents, enter the total here. So we entered the total here. Subtract line 12 from line 11. So we take our total taxes minus out our refundable tax credit. That gives us 3,994 left. Now we have our federal income with, withheld on our W-2. That's this amount, 4,038 plus 2,290. And we pop that in here, six, uh, six, three, two, eight, right here. And so these are our total payments. And this is the amount we overpaid, 2,334. And that's it, done. So, okay, I hope this video was helpful for working on chapter two, practice problems number two, and chapter two, tax return assignment. Remember, there's two in there. One is for 50 points and one is for bonus points. So you could do one first. If you don't get a perfect score, which is pretty hard to do, you can keep trying as much as you want. Um, but yeah, you can get some, some good bonus points as well this time around. So, okay, let me know if you have any questions and I will talk to you soon. Bye guys.